All right, if you're a sound engineer who's been in a situation like this, where you have left and right mains, and then you also have this like center array of subs here, and you've thought to yourself, hey, when I do my alignment, I'll solo one side, and if I do that, I'll also solo one side of my subarray, then this video is for you. So I'll give you a quick overview, and then we'll just dive into some of the details. So the overview here is that I feel like there's basically a best practice that we can all agree upon, and then there is field practice that I think will reflect your preferences, and then basically whatever you need to do to get actionable data. Okay, so let's dive into this. So the reason this came up for me is because um, I had a subaligner user reach out to me and say, hey, here's how I did my alignment. I just wanted to see if you could give me some feedback. And they said, I soloed one side of the array and I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. I do that a lot too. And then they said, and then I soloed one half of the subarray. And I was like, hold on, why would you do that? I've never heard about this. Why would anybody do this? A couple of days later, I had someone else email me and say almost the exact same thing. And I said, why would you ever do that? How did you even hear about that? And they said, oh, I learned that from another teacher. So <laughs> then I really had to start to look into this because I was like, this really doesn't make sense to me. Um, but I did talk to another friend of mine who does do this. And they said that to them, it really makes sense because if the sound system is symmetrical and the room is symmetrical and the array is symmetrical, then you should be able to solo one side and basically get the same results as you would on the other side. And, um, my preference is that that still doesn't, doesn't really work for me. And I'll, I'll tell you why, but also I think at the end of the day, you should do whatever you need to do to get actionable data, right? And get results. So let's back up a second and talk about why you would be doing anything like this. And I think the first step is just that I think we can all agree that the best practice would be to have everything on, right? That's what you're gonna have on during the show that's what people in the audience are going to hear. So you want your alignment and you want your microphone positions and you want your system calibration to as best as possible reflect show conditions. I've got my measurement microphone here and so ideally I wouldn't solo one main. I would turn them both on at the same time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I go over here to my measurement viewer and here I have both left and right mains on at the same time. And I'll zoom in here. So this is the result amplitude graph here of both of these mains on at the same time. And my measurement mic position is right here. And this is what it looks like if I just solo one side. And this is super common, right? When we have left and right mains, uncoupled sources, a lot of times we'll solo one side just to clean up the data because we know just through experience that the data is going to look like this. It's just going to have more ripple because of the late arrival from the other side. And we can also take a look at that phase graph down here and we see the same thing. When we have both sources on, we can kind of see the trend line here of what's happening. We see it coming up like this, and this is where it should be. And then if we were just to solo that other side, we can see that's what's going on here. So we feel pretty confident that, okay, in this case, to get actionable data, to get our alignment done, it will really benefit us to just solo that one main and just use that data instead. Okay. And if you had, you know, uncoupled subarrays and one was over here and one was over here, I think it would also make sense to do that, right? You have these basically your left and right sides that are symmetrical. So you probably want to solo left and right side to get actionable data. Otherwise, if you, you know, had both of these subs on at the same time, then you would, we would be seeing something very similar to what we saw here, right? Just more ripple, but we know that the data that we need is really this thing right through here. 
So the reason this doesn't quite make sense for me with this coupled array here is that there's not a whole lot of benefit and it has a minor drawback that it gives you a false source, a false uh, source location. Let me go to the top view here and show you what I mean. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So when we have the entire array on, then we expect from the you know perspective of this microphone over here that the acoustic lo you know source location of this array is probably coming from about the center that's what we expect from most of the arrays often the geometric midpoint of the array is also the acoustic center of the array uh, and you know we're a little bit off to the side here and maybe we're doing a sub arc so, so there's some delay so there's all kinds of different complexities happening here but this is my initial first assumption that the geometric midpoint is the same as the acoustic center of that array so if you solo one side now you're moving that geometric midpoint and therefore the acoustic source over there so in this case, it's just shifting a little bit, but imagine if this array is very long and now you could be shifting that location by uh, many feet instead of just a couple of feet. So in this situation, I'll show you in a second, you'll see that it doesn't make a huge difference, um, but you can imagine how this might introduce more errors if you had a very long array. And I'll also say that you know, I can see how this might be, you know, beneficial to have less sources, just like we solo the right side instead of looking at both left and right sides. If you solo four sources instead of eight sources, then you should have cleaner data. But in the case of coupled sources, they're so close, they should be, unless it's a very long array or you have lots of complicated delay times, they should be arriving close enough to each other. You know, it shouldn't be causing a lot of ripple. And I guess even more importantly on top of that is that we want to see, if possible, how this is going to perform during the show. Going back to the discussion of best practice. Best practice would be all speakers on at the same time, right? So as close as we can get to that. So. I think best practice is always to start with everything on, and then if for some reason we can't get actionable data, then we change. So I talk about this in my book, The Complete Guide, and I've talked about this in other videos, this book here, The Complete Guide to Measurement Microphone Placement for Subwoofer Alignment. How do you decide if you're going to use head height or ground plane? I think best practice is always to, again, start at head height. That's where our audience is. But if for some reason we can't get actionable data, we go down to ground plane if it's that floor bounce that is causing our data to be inactionable. So I guess this is my main argument here is that you want this entire array, ideally, you want this entire array, ideally, because this is what the audience is hearing. But if for some reason that's not working and you think, you know what, if I could just get a few less sources here, then that would clean up the data. And, and you can try that. So if you can solo half of this array and all of a sudden that cleans up your data, now you can read your data, now you can get actionable data, now you can do your alignment, great. Maybe that was the thing that you needed. Okay, so let's actually try this. So going back over here, I've got a measurement of my right side here. So let's get out of here and let's solo up my subs. So I'll mute my mains. Here is my sub arc down here. Let's hit predict and here it is. And I believe I already have it stored down here. Okay. So we already have pretty good alignment through here because I put these through subaligner earlier. So here in subaligner, I've got my Lena. I put in my total elements, my distance to the right main from my alignment position. And then I did the same thing for the sub. And when I did the sub, I measured from my alignment position 
to the center. I have another video about um, a strategy that I use for choosing that alignment position and choosing um, where to aim the laser, basically the laser disto to get this measurement. And so I'll link to that below this video, but um, that would be make this video uh, a lot longer. Anyway, we see we have pretty good alignment here. And so let's just mute this main for a second and let's zoom in on the phase of this sub and let's even zoom in to the low end because here's what I wanna show you. What would happen, how different are these if we just solo this side of the array? So go back to the measurement viewer here and we see they're very similar, right? Almost matching slope. Down here, we're only apart by less than 10 degrees. Up here, like maybe 20 degrees. So it's like, sure, why not? If for some reason this helps you get cleaner data, then go for it. Um, I can't say that I've been in a situation where doing that has ever helped me. And as you can see, you're gonna have, you know, some small amount of error here, depending on how long your array is. And I suppose other conditions like, um, if, whether or not you're using a, a sub arc and how severe those delay times are, various other conditions, I guess, that could change this. So you're introducing a little bit of error, but you know, probably not enough to make this not a valid strategy. So totally acceptable if that's what you need to do to get the job done. So just to summarize, I think best practice is to always measure your system and capture data as close to show conditions as possible. Um, but if for some reason you're getting inactionable data and you need to start figuring out ways to get better data, actionable data, I think there are a lot of things you could do before you started um, just turning off elements in your subarray. But I also realized that a sub arc is, you know, a fairly complicated thing. You have lots of different arrival times. Um, it's a bit chaotic. And so whatever you need to do to get actionable data is totally fine by me. Um, let me know what questions come up for you about this or if you have any suggestions for me and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.